what I want to show you today is uh, a little example of how this actually works, how you can put together information from the cloud, from your local data center, and even get to these multi-location scenarios. Um, this tool that you see here on the screen, this is our design studio. This is the tool that another developer will use to put that together, connect to the sources, and define the data models. As you can see, it looks very much like a relational database management tool, and that's the goal. Using the Nodo pretty much resembles the usage of a relational database. So the learning curve, as you will see, it's, uh, it's very easy, it's very easy. If you know how to write SQL, if you know how to work with a relational database, you'll be able to put these things together. So what I'm gonna start doing is now connect a couple of different sources in this case, I'm gonna use uh, Redshift and Salesforce.com and get some information from there that then I'm gonna put together in a data model and, and then like, connect that to some local data sources, in this case, an Oracle. Uh, I got, like in the questions, a couple of requests about like a Amazon S3, get data from Amazon S3. Unfortunately, I don't have that as part of my demo but we, we can definitely do that. Uh, we have customers going straight to S3 or customers using Athena for that. Uh, so we will follow up with you on, on that and we'll send you more details, some screenshots, so you get that cover as well. Uh, if somebody else wants to get that information, please uh, raise a question on the chat and we'll make sure we, we follow up with you individually. So um, with that said, let me get started and open these uh, connectors. Uh, and let me go here. This is uh, the connector for Redshift. Uh, as you can see, this is just a connector for a relational database, and I'm selecting here uh, the specific name of Redshift. That will make the node understand exactly how Redshift works, take advantage in terms of performance of the, the particularities of the syntax, uh, how to load data in this case when you load data in Redshift. For example, if you need a temporary table or you're using it as cache, will be uploading content to S3. So all those details that are very specific to Redshift depend on the adapter that you select here. If I open up this diagram, you see that there is many other databases we, we have specific adapters for, things like Snowflake, like Presto, that many people use on the cloud, Spark are fully supported. Other than that, I'm just configuring the connection string, in this case pointing to Amazon, user and password, test that the connection is going through, and that will give me access to the catalog, where I can see the different schemas, tables, that I need. And I'm going to get from here um, one of the tables that I'm going to use for my report, which is customer address. So I'm just selecting the table, click on create selected, and this is now going to pull the metadata from Redshift and create a copy of that metadata in the nodo. Uh, just to mention, we are not moving data at this point. We're just working on a data model. So we're just pulling metadata from uh, Redshift so that metadata is available. And now I'm going to do the same thing with Salesforce. As you can see here, the adapter for Salesforce is uh, different. Uh, I'm using tokens uh, that will will actually use uh, OAuth to open that connection. Uh, getting these tokens is a little tricky, so we actually have a, a connection wizard that allows you to do that easily. Similar for many other uh, cloud applications that leverage OAuth to get those. Um, those connections set up and authorized, so it's fairly straightforward with another thanks to the wizards. Other than that, the connection um, should be just ready to go, and similar to the case of Redshift, I can actually see here the list of Salesforce objects. That they really look like tables, if you think about that. They will behave very similar as since uh, Salesforce has a language called SOQL, Shockwell, Salesforce object query language that resembles SQL in many aspects. So I'm gonna get from here the leads table, as I'm gonna cross the leads with the customers to create some report. Again, get that content, the model, and now I have that content ready to go here. If I execute these tables, uh, in this case just uh, select a start from lead, you will see how the nodo actually goes to Salesforce, gets the data, and represents that just like if it were a table. So from the perspective of actually using that data, it just totally looks like I'm using data from a relational database. Now behind the scenes, if I go to the execution plan, you can see how the nodo goes to Salesforce and actually, we'll see here the URL where the data is coming from, so it's 
raising an HTTP request, it will return JSON, we are parsing the JSON, etc. All that is completely abstracted. Data just behaves like it comes from a table and it returns content like in a relational database. And that's also what's going to enable my next step, which is putting this data together in a join. Uh, if I'm a power user, actually, I might prefer to come to the shell and just start raising my queries, like the one that you have here. But more often than not, people prefer to do that through our graphical wizards. So if I click here, you can see new join. I'm going to drag and drop customer address and leave my two tables. I'm going to join them based on zip code. Uh, which I think, let me search for that content over here. I think it's called postal code. There we go. In Salesforce, I'm going to jo join these two based on that zip code. And I'm going to do just a simple aggregation. So I'm going to get the zip code as my group by, and I'm just going to get the total. So I'm kind of like getting how many customers I have in the zip code where I'm having new leads. Uh, the leads are coming from Salesforce. The number of customers comes from just account to Office. The number of uh, customers comes from Redshift in this case. I'm going to call this um, non customers per something. Right? Now this uh, this a new model. You see, it looks like a, t a table, a view, uh, to be more precise, in a relational database. And I can run a query on this. This should bring data now uh, coming from Redshift one side, coming from Salesforce on the other. These are fairly large tables. A uh, customer table has several million rows. So it's now like pushing those aggregations to the underlying database. And here I have the the, the results where I have the zip code and the number of customers. For, for each one, uh, only for the zip codes that I have leads coming from Salesforce. So it's, it's, you can see sort of like this idea of mixing data from multiple locations, in this case, in the cloud. I'm going to go one step beyond and now join this with another database. And for that, I have data coming from Oracle. So let me show you that. Similar to the one from Redshift, only different here, I have selected Oracle. So the settings are specific for Oracle. And I'm going also to go here and uh, get to this schema and incorporate the table store. So let's see if I have stores in those zip codes that I got from my previous query when I have leads that uh, come from Salesforce. So just got this table store. And now if I come back here to my join wizard, I'm going to again join by zip code. And I'm going to get here in my output. I probably don't need all these fields, so I'm just going to select a few ones like store name and let's say store address, street name, city, and county, for example. I'm going to remove the others. So now I get these fields. I can change the names if I want, call this zip, call this like store name. Like make it like more user friendly so my business users will really understand what this actually means. You can you see on the right side there is also the option to add descriptions. Things like that will make the consumption from the perspective of the end user much simpler. And I'm gonna just call this sample cloud report. Well, actually mix because it's getting data from the local Oracle and from the cloud. It uh, doesn't really matter, as you see, like the process is exactly the same, whether it's local, whether it's cloud, whether it's S3, Salesforce, is like any other uh, cloud application, the process is pretty much the same. Now I can run this report and we'll bring data from those three sources in real time. It's doing like this mix and match of those three different pieces. As I click here, um, I will bring the data that I'm looking for. Now, queries coming from the cloud, uh, even if, if those sources are performant, usually go through the network, especially when you don't have a dedicated wire with AWS or Azure. So take a little longer than what people is used to in a traditional data center. So very common approach in these scenarios is to cache that content. And so I can cache this overnight. That's gonna enable caching. You see the different settings. I'm just gonna go with the default. And now use this option here, store results in cache. So I'm persisting that in our cache. So now this execution is real time again, getting this data from the 
the three data sources, calculating the results, and storing that in my cache. So if I run a query again, now it will come in milliseconds because it's coming straight from the cache. So as you can see, uh, with techniques like this, uh, you can really hide from the perspective of the consumers that this data is remote. They will just get an immediate response. Next step will be to consume this data from somewhere else. In this case, I'm going to use Power BI, the reporting tool from Microsoft, and just um, get this data here from the Nodo. We have a specific adapter for Power BI that speaks in the Nodo dialect. So I just need to, in this case, connect to my local host, and the database is cloud, and I'm going to use the direct query mode. And that should bring me here all those uh, views that I have available. So I have sample mix, cloud report. I'm just going to get the data, load it. And now I have here my field, so I can get like city and zip code and well, things like that, or like bar chart or whatever you, you feel like doing and get that data available to your uh, business users in the form of a map, in the form of like whatever you feel like. I don't really know what that is. I wanted, I don't know how I got the map before. Anyway, like <laughs> what I was trying to show you is how to create a dashboard now, uh, which really it's totally independent from the nature of the data sources. Um, and then user want to see some pie charts, some bars, some maps, where the data is coming from, what's the format, what's the protocol, do I need to use OAuth? That should be completely abstracted, and all that is uh, done behind the scenes by the nodo. So it's just like a table, just has some columns, some metrics, and that's all they, they need to know. Um, so I, I think that's, uh, that's all. I hope that this show you how easy it is to connect different sources, how easy it is to put those together and really abstract that flexibility uh, that, that, that difference of different uh, data sources once you're using the nodo. Uh, one last piece now, uh, getting back to the slide, the, the last slide that Paul presented is when you start having multiple pieces, it's sort of hard to do the point-to-point -point connections. You have data in Azure, you have data in AWS, you have data in your data center. It doesn't make sense at that point to do just like point-to-point -point connections between the nodo and all those systems. What you should do is to have a local the nodo in each one of those systems. A local denodo in Azure, a local denodo in AWS, and a local denodo in your uh, data center if you still have data there. Then you can simply set up a denodo to the node connection. So uh, the other denodo will just look like another data source. As you see here, this is a connection to the nodo. And uh, like any other database, I can just access the schemas and the tables there. So all the processing will be pushed down to that local denodo where the data doesn't have to go through the network. Therefore, the, the, the cost of getting that data out of the AWS, out of Azure, it's only really for the data that I need. If I have combinations there, they will happen there. Uh, that's uh, also a, a big benefit in terms of security since I only need to secure one connection, the denodo to the denodo connection. All the inter uh, intra data center or intra cloud connections are, are done through that the node to the node connection, therefore security is enforced at that level. Um, other than that, it just works like any other data source. 